The pitch to Basabe. Swing and a miss for strike three. Julio Vivas. Strikeout number eight. And a huge second out, protecting a one to nothing lead in the sixth. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go. Hello, Railcats fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Railcats Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Savetich, and we have a, quite a few things to go over today. Uh, we have a Pitcher of the Week. We have the rest of the Kane County, Kane County Series to go over and the Lake Country Series to go over and a AIR a, 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 uh, visit and a new trade that is probably because of the IR. Um, but let's get into the big news that dropped today. Well, actually, both news, both of the uh, pitcher of the week and the trade happened today. But um, let's talk about the pitcher of the week. Julio Vivas gets the honor of being a pitcher of the week, and what a beast he what what numbers he put up. And you know, I I I don't know. Um, I, I'm kind of disappointed to a certain extent that this week in the association didn't pick Julio uh for pitch of the week like I, I understand like um you know the guy that they chose i can't i can't remember who it i would have to go off of twitter or facebook and look up real quick um who they went off of um but just looking quite you know right away at his stats i mean he had two innings where he started or two two games where he started um but he gave up uh, i think two runs in the first game and then had a shutout inning in the um second game Julio, yes, he gave up the one run in, in the American Association. They said that um, he didn't give up in the little uh, article that he didn't give up a run, uh, but it was an, an earned run. An, an, he The unearned run um, happened in the Chicago game uh, after Diaz made the uh, error. That second was one of those tough plays that was kind of bit, he was tagged with an error. The guy later around came and scored. So on unearned error, beside the point uh, of what we're getting at but uh, julio vivas what an absolute beast uh, of pitching that he had in his last well really he credit with one start but it, it should be two starts <laughs> if, if i'm being honest um just looking here um you know he, he had the one against chicago where he had to come in uh basically after three three batters after erwin got hurt uh, and he pitched lights out where that's where the one earned run or the one unearned run came from. Uh, he had uh, 12 strikeouts and 11.1 innings, gave up only one walk and, and six hits. Uh, that's a crazy absurd amount. And, and really the rail cats needed a, a strong pitching performance. They, they have been getting strong pitching performance from their starters and their relievers a handful of games here or there where kind of things started to kind of implode a little bit but really they they've helped with that aspect of it and, and julio being able to get uh the the recognition that he he deserves i mean it hasn't been the best season for him no but he had two really good appearances and one quality great start where he had he helped the real I mean they won one nothing in his last start um uh against uh <clears throat> uh King County which you know it, that's what you want I mean the offense with that you know I'll get a little bit more on the offense and the aspect of that one uh but just looking at the two stat lines that that he has um going back to the Chicago game um where they won uh, eight to six. Uh, Vivas, you know, he pitched the four and two thirds innings, gave up three hits to one run and, and four strikeouts. And if it really wasn't for uh, Aaron Phillips blowing, <laughs> uh, blowing his Vivas's game, you know, he would have probably gotten the win for it um, in that aspect. But you know, coming into King County um, in, in yesterday's game. Going five or uh, six point two, six and two thirds innings, giving up three hits, a one walk, and eight strikeouts. Like the guy was an absolute beast. Like I, I don't know how, you know, both 
the American Association and This Week in the Association, who is probably one of the bigger platforms of reporting minor league, you know, how he isn't a part of that. You know, it's just one of those that just seems kind of odd that he's not um, in, in that aspect of it. But I mean, nor here nor there, you know, however that wants to, they, they want to do their own thing. That's, that's fine. It just kind of seems, um, a bit odd. Um, they actually went with, uh, Mitchell Walters, um, who after going two and O with a 2.25 ERA, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to see how many innings he pitched here. Um, Let's see. He allowed three earned runs in six innings in a four, uh, fourteen to five win over, you know, Kane County, um, and then he had six inning or six uh, six nothing shutout where he went six innings. So I mean, he he had a full inning and in, over uh, Vivas, but still being able to do what he did. You know, yeah, he didn't get credit with the two starts. And, you know, who knows how it would have been. And he didn't go full six innings um, on either one of them or whatever the case, or just the one of them. But coming in uh, coming in cold and coming into it, like, it's just one of those. And I, I know it's it's Gary, and they haven't been really in the talks of much of what's going on anyways. Um, it's just one of those things that I, I, I'm glad that he got recognized for it and he deserves to get recognized for it. Um, as well, so I, I spent some good, you know, good five minutes talking about Julio, which he deserves every second of it. Um, <clears throat> looking at the Kane County series, um, obviously dropping the game one, uh, you know, five to one, but coming back and winning uh, one to three and, and the one nothing impressive game. You know, really the first game I kind of talked about a little bit already in the last podcast. It really wasn't um, anything too special. I, I I think you know Ventus had the 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 rough game. Uh, he went four innings, giving up the three runs, and then Eisenbarger giving up the the two runs, but one was earned. But really, the offense wasn't there, and, and that's the part that that really hurts. Is you know you could sit there and really blame the pitching if the game would end up maybe five four. But it ended up 5-1, so, like, really what more, you know, you're putting all that pressure on, on the pitchers. And really looking back at a lot of these games, I kind of went back a little bit um, here. And, you know, out of the, the from the last Sioux Falls game, um, which is about, you know, in the roughly 10 games now, uh, the pitching gave up four or more runs and only three out of 10. So that's pretty good. But the flip side, the offense only scoring four <laughs> four or more in 10 games and only doing that three times. Like that's, that's the part that like, I, I get that, you know, I was having this um, debate last night, you know, yes. Are the rail cats suited for maybe a one, nothing three, two game? Yes. I think that's how they're suited. But the issue is, is when you're going to play Lake country who, who has been scoring a lot more runs recently, um, but you're going to, you know, Fargo has been kind of struggling, um, but Chicago is going to put up runs uh, you know, you're, you're facing Chicago back to back and then you're going to face Milwaukee. Like you, the offense needs to be there. You can't just rely on the pitching. And this is what, you know, was resemblant of last year was the starting pitching was so great. And the relief pitching was, was mediocre to okay. Uh, I guess mediocre to okay is the same thing. Mediocre to good. Um, they weren't anything spectacular. And I think that was something they worked on. And I think it's gotten a lot better, but um, that's, that's a different debate, debate for a second. I'm just sure what I'm trying to get as the offense quite had the offense last year, didn't pick up the, the defense. And then towards the back half of the year, when the starting rotation kind of fell apart a little bit and, and wasn't quite as consistent, just because I think last year, you know, I think the fatigue of always having to stress over a single game kind of got to them a little bit and not being able to win series and not being able to win those close games. You know, you, you put up, you know, you, you put a goose egg up on the board or you give up one or two runs and your offense throws up a goose egg. Like that doesn't help anything in that aspect of it. So I think a little bit of that, you know, this year, I think the offense has been a tad bit better. I think the offense is better than it was last year, but the issue is, is that the production isn't quite there. And I'll get to that. Um, in a little bit at, at, towards the end. I think it's just one of those when you, you look at it here, um, 
you know, Kane County really hasn't been that productive in the the offensive, you know, standings really, because if you look right now at their average, Kane County is dead last at a 251. Um, their slugging percentage um, is greater than the Railcats by a couple, but um, the the OPS is, is a little bit lower. Um, they're, they got, the on-base percentage is the worst in the league. Their average is worse in the league. Like that, that those come all together, and they're not very offensively driven. Um, in that, you know, in that aspect of it, you know, when you look at the runs, um, so if you're looking at the runs right now, as is, King County has 384 and Gary has 373. All right, so now you're going to move up to Lake Country, who is fourth. In, in, in runs produced per game like that's just a really hard you know when, when you look at the aspect of what king county and, and gary is at and that aspect of it i think um when you look at the pitching um yeah, this is the pitching um gary isn't now king county their average against um, is at a 255, so they're actually pretty high up in there. Um, the eight, the ERA is slightly less than, or, or yeah, slightly less um, in a positive aspect of you know of Gary. So it, it's one of those like these two teams are pretty similar together, and that's why you're getting these games that are three two, one nothing, the five one. The, there's a very close knit and that's could be kind of the reason why you know they're both at the bottom of the division if you're looking at it realistically and why king county just had a fall you know a hard fall off i know you you, you lost quite a bit um with bennett and, and kerrigan you know losing those offensive numbers uh you know really falling off of that aspect of it but the king county series really you needed the sweep um as we look here just just a little bit um of the uh division standings um you know gary is uh four and a half games back from cleburne and really the the, the best thing either way you wanted to look at it that the best thing to can be the to combat the Lake Country and Cleburne series was either Cleburne sweep that series or both or that series be kind of neck and neck a little bit that that kind of helped teeter out a little bit because the issue is if a Cleburne would have got hot and won six straight they'd be so far ahead and if they cooled off you know it would still be a hard hill to climb you know even though you know Lake Country would have really been down there just one of those that if King kind of you know you get that battle in between now you're in a little bit better because it could just be one of those if King County and Gary kind of catch fire and, and Gary takes care of King County again, you know, both of them could slot up into those top two. So it really, either way you kind of look at it, you either wanted one sided to be really heavy or, or just kind of be even itself out. And that's kind of what you got was a nice evenish series between King County or not King County, uh, Cleburne and, and uh, Lake Country. So that's still very close to, you know, only, you're only four and a half games back. That's that's very doable. Really, you want a Cleburne to kind of jump, jump Lake Country. You know, Lake Country is a full five games ahead of you. Um, that's why it's very important that you at least, you, really a sweep here is what you need. But a two out of three, you know, it's going to bring you a little bit closer. It'll bring you two games closer. So that'll bring you to three games back. And with the season dwindling down, really you need a sweep. So you can only be two games back. Uh, and then potentially, uh, you know, if, if Cleburne were to lose their three get swept or whatever, they lose three, I think they're going to a six game set. That would be, you know, they'd only be down two and a half. So it's just one of those that they, you know, it was good that the Gary got two out of three against King County. They're going to have to get, you know, it's going to be have some sweeps here. The, the teams that they're, they're trying to fight, they're going to have to sweep. Um, but, you know, looking at the rest of the, the, the series of King County, you know, the, the, the 3-1 win uh, was, was really fun to, to be there at the game and, and get that one going. I think I have off of this one. I don't remember if it was off of this one or the other. This was game... Um, 
yeah this because i wasn't at the uh the, the yesterday's game um so you know uh, it was Valera driving in Woodworth in the first. Um, then it was Gonzalez's home run there in the the fourth. I believe that was to take the lead back. Um, and then Mariaga driving in Diaz, and Diaz had a great night that night. Um, he went four for four uh, with the run, and it was just kind of overshadowed uh, by Edward Cuello's amazing night that he had, only giving up one run, seven strikeouts, three walks, and three hits. Um, <clears throat> But that was all the scoring, you know, the, those three runs, all the scoring that was needed. Um, and then yesterday, um, it was in the second, uh, was um, uh, LG bringing in Marcos Gonzalez uh, for, I believe, um, his 20th run I, they're not giving me the rbis but i'm just you know and, and vivos is shout out and then you know you have to give out a big shout out to aaron phillips for bouncing back and jack jack eisenberger for bouncing back um because the last time you know we saw aaron phillips he gave up the two runs and then one third uh one and one third inning and then before that it was the the four runs given up to chicago um even eisenberger coming in uh you know th against the the one the one five loss giving up the two runs only one earned um on that aspect of it uh in, in the the one five loss game uh you know i i think it, it was really one of these that when you look at what happened in this series was the defense or the offense and defense i i not necessarily say defense because that first game in defense was not very well um, it seemed just a tad bit off, a little bit shaky, um, not fully functioning quite there. Um, but I, I think when you look at it as a whole, um, the the offense or the defense really came through. The offense scares me. And this was the one thing, you know, as saying the offense is one of those ones that kind of gives me uh, a bit of a scare to a certain extent just because the, the amount that they're scoring isn't very high you know when we're talking about runs they're dead last in in, in runs being scored um you know their average has gone back up a little bit you know they, they were second to last in average um now they're around that 259 mark um kansas city has a 288 so you know you're around that portion of it um your your ops is is towards the bottom just a little bit above winnipeg um your slugging is just is tied for last with winnipeg at 317 uh, or 371 um so it's just one of those like it, I, I i i would have to go back and i would have to look at their average this may be like something towards the off season but their their batting average with runners in scoring position that you know um i think it was this one uh yeah this the they grounded in one two two double plays um and you know when you, when you started out the inning uh and out there or whatever the case may be um but you know you get a runner to second and, and valera ground or mario grounds in a double play um, I think it was the, you know, the Marcos Gonzalez home run really, really set the tone. And then Castillo gets on and then Bakley grounds in a double play and then Guava flies out. Like, it's just one of those, like, you always seem to be, you know, runners in scoring position. Uh, you know, Valera drives in Woodworth, you're one out of five. And then uh, Diaz is sitting on second and... Mariaga strikes out, Gonzalez strikes out, and, and Castillo, you know, pops out. And I don't know how much, how much, um, stock you want to put into runners in scoring position, but like this has been the case is like not being able, you know, you get, you know, two people or three people on, one person drives in the RBI, you have three people on basically, or two people on, but you have no outs and a guy in second and first, and you can't get anything productive out of that. Uh, it is always seeming to be a huge uh, factor in, in that case. I mean, even when you go, just looking at the second game, even when you go to the fifth inning, you know, Diaz gets driven in by Mariaga, but then, you know, Valera sitting on second and Mariaga sitting on first, and then, I mean, you already had two outs in that inning already, the case may be, 
but you know Gonzalez doesn't come he comes home he comes in with a home run in the previous at bat but doesn't come through with anything here it's just one of those that it just kind of keeps piling up in that aspect of you get people on and nothing really productive happens out of it it happens that's just the way the cookie crumbles um but when we look here at the next series against lake country you have three games against lake country at lake country um Looking at their schedule, um, coming off of a long series against Cleburne, which was split three and three um, in that aspect of it. But you're looking at some of their wins here. Uh, they won nine to five, six to five, and six to five. Like you're going to have to be able to win six, five games. Or, or five four games the three two the one nothing isn't really going to be productive in that aspect of it um yeah i know they lost games 14 3 14 to 6 uh and then they want they lost the game four to two this is a huge series that you know you're you're gonna have to you know their schedule doesn't get much easier you know either you know when you're looking at it they're after they play us uh, they play Milwaukee, then they play Chicago, then they play Milwaukee again, then they go on to For Fargo. Fargo's kind of been slipping a little bit, uh, but they have four games against Kansas City. So, like, their their schedule is not, you know, that much different than ours. So, if you can tack on those three wins and, and get three wins in a row, this this playoff picture really comes into fruition. Now you have King County on the, on the other hand. Um, you know, I, I don't know quite what their uh, little bit of their schedule. Let me look it up right now. Um, you know, after, uh, you know, after us, they, they, they play Milwaukee, then they play us again, and then they travel down to Cleburne for six games, and then they play Milwaukee, and then they play Lincoln. Like, after they play us, you know, it could get – this – the, as everyone's counting out the Railcats, right? It's there. It it really is. If you're if you are going to take the schedules that these two teams have, I would say that maybe, just maybe, Kane County has just a tad bit easier with with Cleburne being ups and downs. Maybe just a tad bit. But Lake Country, that's going to be a difficult one for them. I mean, that's that's going to be very interesting, you know, especially playing Kansas City and Milwaukee twice. Like, that's going to be a little bit rough. Now, I'm not saying that the Railcats aren't, you know, that it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough schedule. I say that they're probably in the middle of the road um, with that one, just playing Chicago that many times. And, and Fargo, I know they've kind of slipped a little bit, but the everyone might be down and out but there's there's a ray of sunshine there's there's light at the end of the tunnel with this one and, and if the team can play that they the way they have been and produce you got to give me at least two or three more runs uh give me two or three more runs per game and i, I would feel a little bit easier you know get a sweep of lake country and, and things will get very interesting it's coming down to the wire and it, it's getting there um, but that's not the only thing that has happened in the course of today. <laughs> um, uh, we traded for a player from the Pioneer League, uh, basically one of those like, hey, um, we lost a guy, we need a guy for a roster, you got anyone you want to spare, maybe a cap, whatever the case may be, uh, Daniel uh, Vin Ventrigo, Vin Ventriego. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, this is one person I'm really confused by. So he is a left-handed pitcher out of Venezuela. Uh, he was signed free agent of the Kansas City Royals in 2017. Uh, he's 22, 5'10", 200 pounds. Now, he pl last played in Billings, uh, which is part of the Pioneer League. And when you look here at his stats, he pitched in 21 innings. He gave up 24 hits, 19 runs, 17 earns, one home run, 13 walks, and 16 strikeouts for an ERA of 7.29. 7.29. All right, that's that's his ERA. But when you look at in 2022, uh, 2019, and 2018, it looks like he took a couple years off because of COVID. 
you know, his worst year out of those three years was 2018 at a 281 where he pitched 25 innings. Then he had a 123 or 132, uh, a 157 and 84. And he pitched the, the, the point 84 at ERA, he pitched 10 innings. So I don't know, maybe the Pioneer League maybe bolstered some of those ones. And, you know, and, and, and last year he pitched a 169 ERA, which, you know, when you look here, really, I, I don't know how to put, and, and his whip is sub, you know, sub one, except the 2018 uh season it's just one of those that i i just don't know what to react from this i know it's a pioneer league so some of the numbers might be inflated if if that's the case if it's just a pioneer league i think we gotta steal i really do i really think this is the first time that i really want to look at these stats from someone that we just signed and go wow this guy might be be really productive for the rail cats and, and really bolster that bullpen arm because really you, you really need it um you really need that other person to count on really the people you're counting on is, is nunez veldez uh, uh, wilson wilkinson i mean you're, you're throwing your jack eyes and barkers in there and so, so on and so forth but i just think you need that other arm to kind of save the rest to a certain extent i mean obviously um losing you know, chris Irwin that that's going to bump up uh vivos back in the starting role uh it's seeming like bentis is getting some starts at, you know the, daniel here you know he's pitched or he started in uh let's see four that, that's eight seventeen a handful of games <laughs> a handful of games uh you know so maybe he could be another star i mean even with billings he started four four games played in five so he's been more of a starting role maybe you know relief role is kind of where he's at to a certain extent but he could be another option and this guy could if he's gonna give me an era of at least 281 this is a steal I mean, it's an absolute win for the Railcats and basically giving him up for, you know, getting nothing for him or giving up nothing for him is huge in this aspect. This is the one that we're going to kind of keep an eye on. Like, yeah, you look at his stats with Billing, like, yeah, it's a little rough, but you look at everything else, you're like, hmm, that's kind of odd. Why? Well, one, why did the Royals release him is, is a big thing um you know being able to pitch that or whatever the case may be so i just I, I this is an interesting story to to put together here uh in this aspect of it so yeah and then will decker obviously going the ir um i know he's been in and out of that ir injury so I, i'm not sure what's going on quite with that one um but just kind of running over uh just maybe a handful of stats here um Let's see, regular season, I just want the teams. Uh, just kind of update on some of the stats that we have here. Um, Marcos Gonzalez is batting at 320 now. Uh, Diaz is 309, Mariega 308, Valera 291, Decker uh, obviously out right now. Castillo is batting at 281, Lingua has dropped down to a 263, Woodworth at 254. Uh, Del Valle 253, Grilia 235, Contreras at 215, Cadell 200, and Balaki. Balaki. I see now. See, Jacob Bockley. There we go. I for some reason I had that that um um uh, oh what was what was a key and peel skit in my head for a second. Um, but he's batting a 138. Uh, so that's you know pitching wise here. Uh, looking at ERAs, um, obviously Jones has pitched the one two thirds he has given him anything, but Wilkinson is up there uh, with a three, you know, with a two oh five. Obviously, by far the best Railcat uh, pitching at a two oh five. The next one is Edward Cuello at a two forty eight. Chris Irwin at a two fifty. Harrison Francis at uh, four sixty two. Uh, John Sheeks at four sixty four. Phillips at a 485 Eisenbarger at a 495 Valdez a 5, 504 uh Vivas 535 
uh nunez at a five 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 one uh price at a 610 bentis at a 771 so that's that that rounds out your bottom there and really um Adi is, is really recovering from like that that last that the beginning spell when it was just shot out of the park and there was nothing that he could really do about it um in that aspect so he's still kind of working on that aspect but that's just you're looking at some of your stuff here um and let's just just uh strike out leader Edward Quay out of 64, uh, John Seeks at a 60, and Harrison Francis at 59. Um, you know, I think that's been a lot of things this year is, you know, I don't know Harrison Francis has been out a couple games, um, but he was a strikeout leader, and he hit the century mark last year. It's not quite that. The numbers quite have, the, the pitching numbers really quite haven't, uh, of, you know, reflected on the season they kind of had because some of the stuff, some of the times they come in, it just kind of explodes to that certain extent. Um, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this podcast. Probably what we're looking at probably going forward. Um, if I have the motivation, um, I will probably just have podcast after each game and kind of break down where we're at, um, in that aspect of it and kind of look around the league of where we're sitting at, um, and till maybe we make the playoffs or um till the elimination time so it's going to come down to that that crunch time i'll start probably breaking out some numbers in that aspect of it um but yeah that's going to wrap it up for me if you enjoy this podcast please leave a like comment and subscribe if you're on youtube if you're on any other platform uh five star rating or whatever the case may be on that aspect of it and be sure to like share with friends family whoever might be interested in i appreciate everyone that does like the page subscribes to the youtube channel that kind of stuff so you guys really keep me uh, moving on this aspect of it so yeah hope you enjoy the rest of your day rest of your evening whenever you're watching this and uh go cats the o2 swing and a miss strike three wrap this one up in green and